I've got a word to deliver, and it's in my spirit. And uh, the only way I can get it out is to share that word. Amen? So uh, today we're going to talk about the faith journey. How many is in a faith journey? Amen. If you're, if you're breathing, look, look at somebody and breathe on them. Nah, don't do that. Look at somebody. Amen. Blow breath in your, on your hand. And if you have breath coming out, you're on a faith journey. I promise you. Can you please bring me that? Uh, life is not always easy and it's difficult, especially when you uh, have been told some things. And I believe that uh, God is telling people things every day. Amen? God is telling people things every day. Today I want to talk to you for a few moments about when God leaves out details. God leaves out details. How many has ever had God speak to them? I, I'm going to say this. I, I know a lot of people say, because I, 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 I hear it, people say, God don't speak to me. God don't speak to me. Well, I beg to differ. It's just maybe you haven't learned his voice. And, and I'm not, not saying that critical, not being critical at all. I'm just telling you that God loves you enough, especially if you're a child of God, that he speaks to you. It's a still, small voice. Sometimes it seems like it's audible. Probably not. Amen. It's a strong impression upon your mind that seems audible, but you know it's not God. It's not your voice. Amen. And God will speak to you, give you direction, give you instruction. So today I want to take you to the first, I want to take you to Hebrews, the 11th chapter. I ask you to stand with me for just a moment. Hebrews, the 11th chapter. And we're going to start the sixth verse. And it says this. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. I'm going to just wallow in that for a minute. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them which that diligently seek him by faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he, com he condemned the world and became an heir of righteousness, which is by faith. Let us pray. Father, I ask you, dear God, to speak through me. I believe, dear God, that you have called me here today. You have sent me in this place Dear God, to give a word to the people that's in this house. And dear God, I ask you, Lord, to use these lips of clay to make a difference. Lord, there's some, dear God, that are struggling in their faith. Some, dear God, is this battling with their faith. And, and dear God, in their body, with finances. Dear God, in their life. And I thank you, dear God, that you will use this word today to cause them, dear God, to finish the course that you have set before them. I give you praise, Father. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Come on, look at somebody if you, before you sit down, and if you already sit down, say this. Sometimes God leaves out details. <laughs> Woo, I am so glad that God leaves out details. Amen. So I, I want to take it. Could you bring me that, 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 pile of, that pile of wood and that measuring tape there and, and that, that sort of thing? Thank you, my brother, because I, I believe that, I like details. A lot of times I'll miss details. Like you women, you all, you all can walk in a place and you know what people had on and what kind of shoes and what color they was and what color the wallpaper was. And we have no idea if there was even wallpaper on the walls. Are you? Amen. Are you, are you following me? Amen. Women are more detailed. Guys, not so much. Not always. Uh, but I want to talk to you for a few moments because I find sometimes in the Word, that God is so detailed. And, I, and I'm going to just go ahead and share this beforehand because when, when, he asked, when he asked Moses to build the tabernacle, you go back and, and read in Exodus the, the detail that he told him. He told him the measurements of every piece of furniture. He told him how to make it, how, what to make it out of, how to dip it, amen, either whether it was brass or gold, made in a leaf formation, Come on, he had exact detail 
um, when he was telling them to build the tabernacle. Uh, but let, let, me just, let me just read to you real quick what he tells Noah. Now, you understand that things was really going south real quick in the book of, in the book of Genesis. After the creation of man, man went crazy. How many has ever known anybody to go crazy? Amen. How many has ever had a friend that went crazy? How many is that friend? Yeah. Okay. That's more like it. Um, so we, we have, we have the, the whole world went crazy right, right in the, not the fifth chapter of the book of Genesis. As, as Moses is writing the book of Genesis, he starts telling about how the world went crazy. Matter of fact, there's angels uh, that came and was sleeping with the women, and now there was giants in the land. There's all kinds of, of perverse things that was happening on the world, in the world. And, and God said, it repenteth me that I even made man. But Noah found grace in his sight. He said, you know what? I'm going to save mankind, but I'm going to do it through you, Noah. I'm going to save you and your family, okay? You and your son-in-laws. I'm going to, I'm going to save your daughters. I'm going to save your wife. And, 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 but I want you to, to build an ark. You must understand that it, it never had rained. And you can do a study on that. They never knew what rain was. The, the, the ground was watered by the dew. So the rains came up instead of the rains coming down. And so everything was well, guarded, well, well uh, watered, but it was coming from up from the earth instead of down. They never seen rain. But now God tells Noah in this passage, I want to I read this if you, if you would. Let me find my, find my glasses here. So, all right, uh, let's go to Genesis, the 6th chapter, and we're going to start the 13th verse. It says, And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. The breadth of, the, of it should be 50 cubits. And the height of it should be 30 cubits. A window shalt thou make in the ark. And in, the, and in a cubic shalt thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shall be set in the side thereof. In with lower and second and third stories. Thou shalt make it. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all the flesh wherein is the breath of life from under heaven. And everything that is in the earth shall die, but with thee will I establish my covenant and thou shalt come into the ark, and thou and thy sons and thy wives and thy sons' wives with thee, and, and every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort, shalt thou bring in and after their kind, and the cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing upon earth after its kind, two of every sort shall come upon thee, or come with thee, and to keep them alive, and take thee unto thee all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and thou shalt be for food for thee and for them. And thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Somebody say amen. amen. So now, uh, as I was reading, I, I'm, I'm making a list. I'm making a list. So, um, you know, I think Noah would be like a contractor. Have you ever seen a contract? They're carrying a two before. Amen. It's not that they're so in love with a two before. It's just that's their paper. Is anybody? Come on, come on. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That's that's my board right there. So, how many's how many's a contractor in here? And you've ever wrote on a board? How many's ever took took a board to the lumber company with you? If you haven't, you're not a real contractor. Amen. Or took a picture. Now we have phones. But before we had paper? Yeah, you remember that? We had boards, right? 
So listen, Noah decided that he was going to take notes. All right, so he took notes, and as he was taking notes, he said, build an ark. What's an ark? Now you think about it. God's asking him to do something. This is not fabricated. He said, I want you to build an ark, and this is what he said. He said, I want you to make it out of gopher wood, right? Okay, so we understand that cypress, so it's a, a long-lasting wood. Insects hate it. So now we're going to make it out of gopher wood, all right? We're going to make rooms in it, right? Going to make rooms in it. We have, wow, where'd you get that? Okay, now she's already doing my work for me, and, and that's, that's way too much, all right? So I, I need that paper if I'm going to build this ark. Get that off that screen. All right, so watch this. Now we're going we're gonna to make rooms because this is my blueprint. This is what Noah had, okay? They made that, that, that little blueprint right there, they made it after Noah had figured it out. <laughs> Amen? So watch this. Now Noah has, has this, this instruction. He said, okay, make it out of gopher wood. Make rooms in it. Pitch it within, that means take some tar and make sure that it's sealed on the outside and sealed on the inside because we want it to float. If you're going to make a boat, you need it to float. How many knows what I'm talking about? How many's ever left the plug out the back of your boat and back in it because you were so excited about going fishing? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, Sister Tina did too. Three times, that was me. All right, he said that build it this way. He said, build it 300 cubics long, all right, 450 feet. He said, I want you to, to build it 450 feet long. Matter of fact, I want you to now, I want you to go uh, 45 feet tall. So I wanted this thing to be 45 feet tall, and I want you to be 75 feet wide. All right, so we got 50 cubics wide and 30 cubics tall. That is not a problem. He can figure that out, right? Noah can figure that out because he's done the math. All right, that, now we got it. We got it going on. So I'm going to draw this thing out. Let, let's look at it. Let's look at it right there. All right, I'm going to draw it out. We're going to draw it out. There's that, that's the length of it. I'm going to make the height of it. Okay, we're on a row. We're on a row. Okay, so now um, we're going to put a window on top of it. That's no big deal, right? A door in the side. All right, that's not a big deal. Not a big deal. Uh, make three stories. Okay, now how am I going to span... Uh, I'm going to need some help. I mean, can you guys help me here? Because okay, I'm going to need to span this. I need that blueprint, but don't put it back up there. Uh, I'm going to need to span uh, 75 feet. And I'm going to do this with timber. How many trees is it going to take? How many cypress trees is it going to take for me to build this ark? Right, right, right. No, you got to do it just like I do. You got to write on the back of that. You got to figure it out. All right, so how many trees, Brother Rick, how many trees is it going to take? Cypress trees. And they, listen, let's go and get some big ones. And my goodness, I don't know where we're going to get them, but I guess we're going to have to pray. Because I don't own any woods. So we're believing that God's going to give us favor, but I'm, uh, let's, let's, let's plan on using trees about, uh, Oh, man, probably four foot through. But it's just me and my family. We may have to cut them and slice them while they're still standing. I don't know. But that's not my job. You figure that out. Okay. But I've got to span it. Brother Brad, can you help me with this? Uh, I'm going to have to span Brother Brad was out here the other day, and uh, one, of his, one of his guys that worked for him said, you know what Brother Brad did? He called me, and I'm out here in this heat, and he said, where you at? He said, how hot is it? He said, I'm in the air-conditioned truck. <laughs> it's cruel. I'll ask somebody else. I'm having... So to span this thing... Uh, I'm going to have to span it 45 feet, and what size beam am I going to have? See, I'm going to tell you this. Listen, you think this, you think this stuff is, uh, is elementary, but this is all the things that Noah had to deal with. He said, build an ark, but he left out the details. 
He said, matter of fact, he said, I want you to build rooms in it. Brother Rick, you got any kind of idea how many, how many trees you're going to have to have? 48 inches of diameter, 30 feet in length. It's going to take 477 trees. Wow. Well, I got 120 years. <laughs> oh, how many? 400 and what? I'm going to have to have 477 trees to do this project. And God didn't tell me that, but praise God for good friends, amen, that, that can, work, they can work a piece of lumber, amen. Okay, so I've got the trees. How many? 427? 77. 77? I was going to be 50 short. That's what happens when you don't listen. You'll wind up coming up short. Amen? 77. Seven. Okay. All right. So rooms. Wait a minute. I'm going to need some help here. Rooms. Ah, let's see. Okay. I've got tigers. I know I've got lions, bears, horses, cows. I can put the horses in the same thing, same kind of the same stall, same size stall as I could put the cows. Uh, zebra, not the same thing. Uh, what is that? Uh, goats? Mm, okay. Yeah, I can figure that out. A rhinoceros. Hey, Ham. No, I gotta get my son. Ham, I need you to do me a favor. You have your measuring tape on you? Okay. Praise God for cobalt. Amen. So, I need you, if you would, uh, I tell you what, if you would, uh, do this first because I think I'm going to have to wind up putting a giraffe over here on the end because God didn't tell me how to do it, and I have no idea what size to make it. So could you go find a giraffe and measure that? Yeah. Do you even know what a giraffe looks like? That's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay, well, I, what you got there, son? Ten foot. No, that's 18 feet. Okay, so we'll make that. Oh, we got the draft. Okay, son, I, I got one more. Uh, matter of fact, uh, a kangaroo. I, well, I know that's not on. There's one right there. <laughs> Go get him. See, son, see, see if you can get a measure on the, on, the, on the kangaroo. Hey, right here, kangaroo. There's one right there. And then I'll think about it. Now, I know this sounds kind of crazy. But everything, I don't know. I think them things will get you. All right, we've got it. All right. The, I, I, there's one thing I don't know, and that is rhinoceros. But now listen, son, I don't know what, what I, don't even, I haven't even been around a rhinoceros. We call them rhinos. That, you might know them by rhino. Okay? Rhinoceros. Now, they're a tame animal, and... Here's what they look like. Come here, let me show you what they look like, son. Here. They, they're, they're, they're like this, they shaped like this, and then they come over here, and they got this little bit point right there on their nose, and then they come out. So let me know if you see one. But I got to get... I, do what? It looks like a pig. <laughs> son, just go look. Go look. It'd be like the size of a, a mess, the, the size of a man's hand. Amen. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Thank you, son. What was the measurement on that one? Oh, yes. Okay. Let, let me let me tell you this. With God speaking to Noah, He told him everything to do, but He didn't the details. Sometimes in our life, when God speaks something to you, He don't give you the details. It's a faith walk. By faith, Noah built the ark, even though he didn't have all the figures, even though he didn't have all the details. 
even though he didn't have it, he built it. He didn't understand it. And then the project started. And I believe in this passage, I believe uh, in this, this, I believe that God left out some details on purpose because it's a faith walk. But not only this, this is a completely different than he did with Moses about the tabernacle. And I believe that when God spoke to Moses about the tabernacle, what he was saying is, is my people need to see me. They need to see me. They need something tangible. He said, so I want you to build a tabernacle. Build a place where they can be in my presence. And he didn't leave out any details because he didn't want any delays. But it was different with Noah. Why? Because it had to do with the judgment. And oh, maybe, maybe the, the people would repent. And so the project took 120 years. God could have done it in 52 days like he did with Nehemiah. Amen. He could have rebuilt the walls or he could have built. Come on. He could have had everybody repent and come together and put the ark together in 52 days. But it was a bigger project than that. And God delayed it because it had to do with judgment of his people. And God loves people more than anything. And I believe with all my heart that God wants his people to repent and walk holy before him. So he gave them an opportunity. He gave them an opportunity to get right. So, listen, Noah, every day that he, he drove nails or drove the wood pins and made the sockets and made everything fit together, he made the rooms within and without. He made sure that it fit all the animals and made sure that everything was allotted for. Matter of fact, they pre-planted the garden for this occasion, even though it delayed I don't know what Noah thought. It didn't say that it didn't give a time when it was going to end or a time when it was going to happen. God didn't tell him all that because God probably made up his mind that he wasn't going to give that detail. He did because he didn't. I think if we have a time frame in which things happen, we'll delay or slumber in the process because we got plenty of time. But God said, I'm not going to tell him. I just want you to be busy, Noah. I want you to be busy building the ark because it's going to save countless thousands or it's going to save a generation. It's going to save all the animals. And what I created was good. And what the enemy has done is bad. So I want you to invest. I want you to keep on the project. And I believe that God will speak to people in this house to stay on the project even though things delay. And I believe that's what the Lord is speaking to us today in this house. I believe that, that when, when Noah started building the rooms, he didn't have all the measurements, so he had to figure it out along the way. I believe that God will use wisdom, and he'll use the, the need to rely upon him in a project of faith. Because if we had all the tools and all the resources to start out with, we would never talk to him. I know what I would do if I had all the, all the material and all the things laid out. I would just put my head down and work with everything I got. And at the end of it, I say, God, how was that? But through the journey, he wants you to rely upon him. Through life, he wants you to rely upon him. Because it's about relationships. It's about the journey. It's about the people that you affect on the way, come on, to where you're going. If he just give you vision, it would be about the project that you're working on. But the fact is, the vision has always been people. It's not a building. It's not land. It's people. It's the individual that's sitting beside you. God loves you more than anything. He loves you enough to send his only begotten son to give his life as a ransom for you. He paid the ultimate price to give you that life. And he cares about humanity. He cares about people. We was made in the likeness of his image. We was made for a reason to serve him and love him and worship him and have that relationship. And when we stray from that, it troubles God. And he finds some way to bring us to repentance. I love the fact that God doesn't give up on us. I'm here in, a, in the midst of people that you have had God deal with your heart so many times. You've had God touch you when you shouldn't have even been talked to. 
Amen. God has spoke to you when you, you just got through doing some crazy stuff and you're laying your head on the pillow at night. He starts dealing with your heart and saying something like, you're better than that and I love you. I got a plan for your life. And you say, God, why are you even talking to me? I'm not even acting right. I haven't been right. But dear God, why do you keep on loving me? I don't know why he keeps on loving us. But the fact is that he doesn't give up on his people. What he starts, he finishes he is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He leaves out details because he wants you to trust him for the details. God, why? Why? How? When? How do I structure this? Lord, how do I structure this? How do I raise this son? How do I raise this daughter? Lord, how do I provide for my family? God, how do I, what, what, what size should I make this and how should I do this? God, I need you every hour. Oh Lord, I need thee. When the world brings out difficult things, that's when we've got to spend time with him. No. I'm going to redo that. The Lord spoke to me. He said, no. He said, that's what's wrong with the world. They wait until things get bad. That's right. Amen. Yeah. I owe, I owe, so off to work I go. Instead in the morning, Father, thank you for blessing me for another day. Thank you, Lord, for waking up, waking me up. And I thank you, dear God, that I have the covenant of Abraham. Lord, whatever I put my hands to do is blessed. I'm the head and not the tail above, only not beneath. Lord, I realize my need for you. And Lord, I don't want to walk one step without you because the footsteps of a righteous man are ordered by you. Dear God, your spirit is a lamp. Dear God, your word is a lamp unto my feet. And you said you'd lead God and direct me through all truth and righteousness. Lord God, I'm fixing to get up out of this bed, and I need your help today. Come on, give God some praise in this place. I don't have to wait until I go crazy. And I don't have to wait until I get my brains kicked out. I don't have to wait until I lose everything. God has counsel for me before I ever get up. Amen. Father, I know I should know this, but you know what? This and one more boat would be two for me. No one around here has ever seen an ark, built an ark, especially one this big. And by the way, Lord, we're not even next to the ocean. So people think I'm crazy. Lord, even though you told me to do this crazy stuff, I believe you. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to do just like you told me to do, and I'm going to believe just like you told me to do. But, but, but to tell me about it, I'm going to believe it. But dear God, listen, I need details. And I don't have to have it all mapped out today. But Lord, before I put a nail in a board, before I drive a pin in the next, uh, the next stall, before I chase another rhino, I just need your counsel. Oh, Lord God. I, I, I feel this in my spirit. Oh, Lord God, forgive me for making the wrong moves. And now, Lord, i got to tear out walls and rebuild because I made it the wrong size. So, Lord, from this day forward, I'm going to do things different. How big do you want me to make that? How many rooms do you want me to make in it? You told me rooms, but can you give me a number? And some of these animals are really ugly and really mean. You want to just leave them out? 
Oh, you want to keep them? I'll get my son to get them. I get it, Lord. I get it. You, you've got this big project for me, and, and I believe you. So I'm going to follow your plan. You've been waiting for that, right? Yeah. I'm going to follow your plan. I'm going to do it just like you said. How long is it going to be? You're not going to tell me, are you? I wonder how many people in this house have started a project or have went half the distance or three-fourths the distance. This is what's really messed you up. How about 97% of the way of the faith walk and then stopped or went the other direction because it delayed? In the faith mile, as we shared in the early service, the blind man walking a mile in the dark because the Lord told him, he says, go wash in the pool of Salaam. One, one mile, there's a lot, of, a lot of time to have doubt. And when a project delays or when God speaks to you and say, this is what it's going to be, I'm going to send this, I'm going to send that, I want you to build an ark. In the delaying process, many times when things don't happen, Doubt. Mm. Wait a minute. I've, I've got a question to ask, and, I, and I'm closing for real. I've got a question to ask. I wonder when Noah had, because it doesn't say, I wonder when Noah had it all completed. 120 years on the same project. We complain about a job that's been lasting for, we've been on the same job for three years. We're complaining. 120 years on the same project. I wonder if he got it done early. I wonder how many days. I wonder if even it's a year. I wonder how long it took because he preached. And I, I believe it, and I can, I can justify it, and I can say, well, God was waiting for the door. Amen everything to be completed, and one more call that the people would repent. And God's grace is like that. I believe that God has kept you from car wrecks. He saved you from car wrecks. I believe He, he saved you from, from bad drugs, which not that there is a good one. He saved you from dope that your buddies died from. He saved you from those suicide thoughts where you thought you, was, you had already made up your mind that you was going to end it, but it didn't go off, or uh, God rescued you by a friend calling. I, I, I don't know, but there's... I wonder when it's all finished and the door is... Everything's inside, all the animals is inside, and just waiting for the people. Everything's ready. Everything's ready. Put that ark up there, sissy, again. Everything's ready. Beautiful, beautiful boat, beautiful ark. It's full of everything that's needed to sustain life. And it was put together to save humanity and to save God's creation because God had to bring judge, judgment on the world because it was just out of hand. Kind of like it is right now. Never seen America like it is right now. Never. I'm 61 years old. I've never seen it like it is now. Never seen things so out of control and so flip-flopped and uh, out of balance, never. Never seen so, so many people hungry for something different. They're hungry for God. And they may be looking in all the wrong places, but they're so hungry for God. 
And now we have this ark ready. And the Lord has delayed for just a moment. But I wonder how long it took. I don't know. He said, everything's ready. Go get the animals. Pick the garden. Well, when he says pick the garden, it must be close. Get in the boat. I don't think there's a better time to be getting involved in, in God's house, the boat, than right now. I believe that we need this community of believers to strengthen each other. But the Word tells us that iron sharpens iron. So does one man's countenance sharpen another. He said, get in the boat. Then, after everybody was in, I believe God delayed just a moment. Then he shut the door. Noah didn't shut it. God shut it. And when God shuts the door, it's shut. After 120 years, it happened just like God said it did, or said it would. After 29 years, God's speaking to us in 1995 to build the ark. We've been prepping, we've been building, we've been making room for growth. And it will happen just like God said it would. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know what, what change and, and what, what turns are going to happen in this nation to bring that about. I don't know. It doesn't matter. All I know is God says, build the ark and place a refuge. That means that people will come from miles and miles to get what they need. Had dream after dream and people coming with vision after vision. I know what God has spoke to me. And I know what God has for this house. We're not just through every other house. We're not, I don't criticize one for not doing this or not doing that. It's, it's not, their, it's not their, their yoke. It's not what God's called them to do. But God's called this house to be a refuge. A place where people can get Jesus find Jesus and find the love of their life and get restored, get put back together and be safe from the raging war of the world. I ask you to stand with me, please. I'm telling you this, to get in the boat while there's still time. 